All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the sequel of the video of the volume of a ball in R3. In fact, today I will evaluate its cousin, namely the surface area of the sphere in Rn. And in fact, you'll see the proof I think is even more amazing. And I believe it's much shorter, but it's great. And in fact, let me start by giving you some definitions. So step one, first of all, it's kind of a weird definition, but the surface area of the sphere in Rn, I won't denote it by Sn, I'll denote it by Sn minus one. Because um, it actually makes the formulas in the end much nicer. So Sn minus one of R, it's the surface area. of the sphere of radius r in rn. And this n minus 1, what it really means, it's a n minus 1 dimensional sphere. So it always has a dimension 1 less than the space it lives in. So if this is rn, looks like R3, but imagine this is Rn, then we have just a sphere in Rn, which we'll write as Sn minus 1 of R. And this is radius R. So just a couple of quick examples. For example, S1 of R, it's a sphere of dimension 1, and dimension 1 just means a circle in this case. And, uh, you know, the surface area of the circle, so the perimeter, is just 2 pi r. And similarly, the two-dimensional sphere is the one that we know from Rn, and its surface area is just uh, four, 4 pi r squared. This surface area, surface area. And if you notice, the surface area always scales like r to that power, so r to the n minus 1, because in s1 of r, it's r to the first power, s2 of r is r to the second power, and in fact, this is always true, claim sn of r, so it's the surface area of, sorry, sn minus 1 of r, n minus 1 dimensional sphere in Rn, it's always equal to r to the n minus 1 times something. And that something, it's precisely the surface area of the sphere of radius 1. So Sn minus 1 of 1. And in fact, we did have an analogous you know, statement for the volume of the ball in Rn, we said that the volume of the ball in Rn equals to r to the n times the volume of the ball of radius 1 in Rn. So it's the same statement, and in fact the proof is basically the same, and because it's the same, I'm not going to go through it you know, very slowly. Why is this true? I'm not going to go through it in you know, much depth because there are other videos that explain this a bit more clearly, like the video on volumes and determinants or the video on the Jacobian. And in fact, it's not a super important point. It's the rest of the proof that's much more awesome. So it turns out that we can express the sphere of radius r, so Sn minus 1 of r, in terms of spherical coordinates, so there is an analog of spherical coordinates for higher dimensional spheres, and in this case, you can express it with um, like n minus one angles. So think of it as phi one, or maybe theta one, dot 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 of theta n minus one. Okay, and then in terms of those spherical coordinates. The surface area of that sphere 
is equal to the integral over the sphere here, Sn minus 1 of r of d theta 1 dot 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 d theta n. But now, it turns out, you can do a, cha a simple change of variables that maps this sphere or transforms this sphere to the sphere of radius 1, like the smaller one. Namely, all you do, you define if you want theta i prime to be theta i over r. So there are new coordinates here for Sn minus 1 of 1, which are given by theta 1 prime, dot, 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 theta n minus 1 prime. And, in fact, if you take the determinant of the Jacobian, or 1 over the determinant, whatever, at each point, you get a 1 over r, but because they are n minus 1 variables, you multiply this 1 over r n minus 1 times. And that's why you get this r to the n minus 1. So again, with the change of variables, you indeed get r to the n minus 1 of the integral in terms of the new coordinates of sn minus 1 of 1, d theta 1 prime, d theta n minus 1 prime, n minus 1, and again, the integral of 1 over an object is just the surface area, in this case, of that object. So in the end, you have r to the n minus 1 of sn minus 1 of 1. And that's precisely what you want. The surface area of the sphere or radius uh, sphere radius r is r to the n minus 1 of the surface area of the sphere radius 1. And again, if you're completely lost, it's normal. I went through this a bit quickly, but as I said, the next part of the proof, it's really where the heart lives, you know. And here comes the exciting part of the proof. It relies on an extremely cool trick, and let me tell you that trick. It's very weird why that works, but it does work. So let, consider the following Gaussian function. Okay. f of x1 up to xn equals to e to the minus x squared over 2, absolute value, where I like to remind you, x squared is just the sum of the squares of the components, dot, 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 plus x to the n squared. And this proof just relies on calculating the integral of f in two ways. On the one hand, you have the following. Integral of rn f of x dx, or in front of you, f of x1 up to xn dx1 up to xn, that's integral of rn e to the minus absolute value of x squared over 2 dx, which equals to integral over rn of e to the minus x1 squared over 2, e to the minus x2 squared over 2, dot, 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 e to the minus xn squared over 2, dx1, dot, 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 dxn. And then the nice piece is, the nice thing is, each piece does not depend on the remaining pieces. So in fact, you can write this down as following. So you can anti-Fubini it if you want. Integral over r, or integral if you want, from minus infinity to infinity, of e to the minus x1 squared over 2 dx1. Integral from minus infinity to infinity, e of minus x2 squared over 2 dx2 dot, 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 integral from minus infinity to infinity, e of minus xn squared over 2, dxn. And if you're not convinced by this step, 
Just think about it in the reverse order. This integral, you can just put it inside that integral to get a double integral, and then, sorry, yeah. Double integral, and then the next one, you can still put it inside, and the point is, you can put all the integrals inside to get precisely this n integral, you know, e to the minus x1 squared over 2, blah, 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 dx1 over, you know, dx1, dot, 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 dx. Okay, but the cool thing is, we actually know how to evaluate this, at least based on another video, possibly on another channel, where I calculated this integral. In fact, if you remember, maybe ironically, this equals to square root of 2 pi times square root of 2 pi, dot, dot, dot. Square root of 2 pi, okay, and this n times, and you're left with square root of 2 pi to the n, which is the same as 2 pi, to the n over 2. And again, maybe different constants, because here we have this different exponent. So, on the one hand, the integral of f, of this weird function that will magically help us solve our equation, is equal to 2 pi to the n over 2. And the rest of the proof is finding another clever way of integrating this function. So recall, f of x is just e of minus x squared over 2. And we calculated that the integral of f is 2 pi to the n over 2, 2 pi to the n over 2, f of x dx. All right, and now I want to motivate something very important which will appear in many other videos. This function, it's a radial function. It only depends on the absolute value of x. So it might look like something like that. In other words, if you rotate it, you still get the same function. And because it's a radial function, there's something circular going on. And it would be nice if somehow we had a polar coordinates form of formula for this. In other words, it would be nice if we can somehow transform this integral into polar coordinates, and it turns out this is true, and that's what's called the onion formula, or more formally, the, uh, the co-area formula. So fact, in other words, for any function, not only radial, you can write the integral of f in terms of the following. And for this, think of the following. You have Rn, and instead of fubiniing it, like decomposing it into lines, think of decomposing Rn into circles. So suppose you have a circle of radius r, then you can just, if you want, decompose the plane or decompose rn in terms of circles of radius r, or more precisely, spheres of radius r. And how do you integrate the function over rn? Well, first, if you want, you integrate this function on the sphere of radius r, so if you want, this is sn minus 1 of r. So, take your function, integrate it on the sphere of radius r, so f of x, d, so basically the, the measure on the sphere, which is called the surface measure, so d sigma x, again, if you want surface element, on Sn minus 1 of R. And once you integrate it on one, one sphere, all you have to do is add up all those spheres, which in math just means you integrate. So if you integrated that over the angles, just integrate it over the radius. So it's integral from 0 to infinity 
of this John, which only depends on R, of dr. So, this is really like a polar coordinates formula. This tells you the integral over Rn of f of x dx equals to the integral over the radius of the integral of every ball of f of x d sigma x. And again, it's very useful in this case because a function only depends on the radius, so it turns out this thing will be enormously simplified in this case. And for future reference, this is the co-area formula. And the proof involves a lot of measure theory, so it's quite advanced. Okay, okay. now, applying our co-area formula, we get, again, the integral over Rn of f of x dx. It's 2 pi to the n over 2, but that also equals to the integral from 0 to infinity of the integral of Sn minus 1 of R of e to the minus, remember, f of x equals e to the minus distance x squared over 2. But on the sphere of radius R, we're precisely a distance of R away from the origin. So in this case, absolute value of x just becomes r. And you're left with e to the minus r squared over 2 d sigma of x of dr. And as I said, this is amazing because this function does not depend on x and we can just pull it out of the integral. And you're left with the following, integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus r squared over 2, integral sn minus 1 of r, d sigma of x, dr. And if you like, it's the integral over one, of 1 over that object. And remember, the integral over 1 of something is just the in this case, the surface area of that thing, so the measure of Sn minus 1 of R, and you have e to the minus R squared over 2, surface area of this sphere, so really cool, dr. And I like to remind you that the surface area of the sphere of radius R scales very nicely with respect to the radius, that's equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus r squared over 2, r to the n minus 1 of the surface area of the sphere, or radius 1. So that was step 1. one. And the nice thing is, this thing is just a constant with respect to r. So you can pull that out too. And you're left with the following. Sn minus 1 of 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of e of minus r squared over 2, r to the n minus 1, e r. Which is nice, you know, it sort of Write the integral over f in terms of this weird integral. It looks horrible, but it just it's just a one variable integral. So we literally took a multivariable calculus problem and converted it into a single variable calculus problem. So in much happier ground if you want. And the next step is simply to write this integral into something that's more familiar to us. And I will not spoil the surprise yet. So, let's just do a simple change of variables, which in this case, let's write t equals to r squared over 2. Over 2. And then 
I'll tell you what we get now. So far, we got the following, 2 pi to the n over 2 equals to sn minus 1 over 1, which you want, times the integral from 0 to infinity, e of minus r squared over 2, r to the n minus 1 dr. And as I said, let's use the chain of variables. So t equals to r squared over 2. Sorry if I wrote something different before. t is r squared over 2. So dt equals to r dr. Okay. And moreover, well, I'll write it in a second. So then, if we do this, this integral becomes sn minus 1 of 1, and then 0 squared over 2, that's still 0, infinity squared over 2, that's still infinity, and you're left with e of minus t, and then r just becomes a 2t, if you want, two, so r is square root of 2t, so 2t two to the 1 half, and again, to the n minus 1 power. So remember that's r to the n minus 1. And then remember our Jacobian here. So yeah, basically Jacobian. We get a 1 over r. So dt is r dr. So r is uh, 1 over r dt. becomes a huge mess, <laughs> but we will simplify this. So equals to Sn minus 1 of 1, integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t. Okay. Now, 2t to the 1 half to the n minus 1 is 2 to the n minus 1 over 2, t to the n minus 1 over 2, and then 1 over r becomes, I believe, 2, 2 over t, something like 2 over t, but okay, r is a square, a square root of 2t, sorry, so 1 over square root of 2t, t, square root, you can write it as 2 to 1 half, and I believe you left then with the following, sn minus 1, integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t, and then t to the n minus 2 over 2, and then 2 to the n minus 2 over 2. Dt. You might say, where the hell am I going with this? Well, I'm... <laughs> Very close to it. Okay, it might be gamma classic, so you'll see. So this becomes again s to the n minus one of one, two to the n minus two over two, integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus t, and then t to the n over two minus one dt. But, as I mentioned a second ago, you can write this in terms of the gamma function. So, and I would like to remind you that gamma of z is precisely integral of from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t, t to the z minus 1 dt. And so, if you compare this with this, you find that, in fact, SN you get Sn minus 1 of 1, again, surface area of the sphere that we want, 2 to the n minus 2 over 2, and this is gamma of n over 2. Okay. Which means we're all basically done, because on the one hand, our integral of f, equals to 2 pi to the n over 2. On the other hand, our integral here becomes what we want, sn minus 1 of 1, times this weird constant, times this weirder constant gamma, and that equals to 2 pi to the n over 2. Which tells us, in fact, 
we can solve our thing. This will be this constant divided by that. Conclusion, right? again, 2 pi to the n over 2 equals to s to the n minus 1 of 1 of 2 to the n over 2 over 2 gamma of n over 2. And therefore, s to the n minus 1 of 1 equals to, if you want, so 2 pi to the n over 2, which is 2 to the n over 2, pi to the n over 2, divided by 2 to the n over 2, minus 2, if you want, sorry, 2 to the n minus 2 over 2, gamma to the n over 2. And notice the nice thing is, those 2 to the n over 2's cancel out, except to the 2 of minus 2 over 2. So we're left with 2 pi to the n over 2 um, over gamma of n over 2. So again, it's 2 times pi to the n over 2 divided by gamma of n over 2. That gives us the surface area of the sphere of radius 1. How do we get the surface area of the sphere of radius r? Remember, you just multiply this jump by r to the n minus 1. So, s to the n minus 1 of r becomes, if you want, 2 over gamma of n over 2 pi to the n over 2 r to the n minus I think it was a very neat trick where you just consider this weird function and you just apply the onion formula or the co-area formula and this is nice because there's no beta functions involved. The highest we have to go is the gamma function. And just one little remark. Once you have the surface area of the sphere, in fact, you can rederive the volume of the ball Again, just using this polar, this uh, co-area formula, because note, what is the volume of the ball? I guess let's call it Vn of r. Well, it's the integral of 1 of the, the ball. So b0 r the, um, sorry, dx. And now, using this uh, co-area formula, or something similar to this, what is, how do you integrate this function over the ball? Well, all you do is you integrate this over a sphere of radius r, and let r, instead of going from 0 to infinity, r goes from 0 to capital R. So that's the same thing as saying integral from 0 to capital R of integral over the sphere of radius little r of 1, again, d sigma x dr. But then, this is just the surface area of the sphere. So integral from 0 to r of s to the n minus 1 of r dr. This, we just figured out that equals to the integral from 0 to r of 2 over gamma to the n over 2 pi to the n over 2 r to the n minus 1 dr. And now, this is ugly, but it's just a constant. So all you have to do is anti-differentiate this. One was integrated from 0 to r, and you're left with 2 over gamma of n over 2, pi to the n over 2, and then r to the n over n, which in this case is r to the n over n. And then you might say, hey, it's not quite the formula it's given, but it turns out n times gamma of n over 2 
you can calculate this, and that equals to, I believe, gamma of n over 2 plus 1. And in the end, you're left with 2 pi to the n over 2 r to the n over gamma of n over 2 plus 1. So from this formula, we recover the formula for the volume of the ball, which is pretty neat. And what I like about this is that mm, it explains in some sense why the volume of the ball is an antiderivative of the surface area of the sphere. Or otherwise, you know, in another perspective, it explains why the surface area of the sphere is the derivative of the volume of the ball. It's precisely because of this process like that. Okay, so if you had a lot of spherical fun and would like to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.